I am so pleased that justice has taken place today. Because under normal circumstances, we begin to doubt, but today we are happy. I want to use this opportunity again to tell the whole world that the tribunal that is going on, I want to invite all the lawyers that are in charge, that are representing the Labour Party, that they should come for briefing. They should come and give me updates of what is happening in that tribunal within the next 48 hours. Because right now, I'm the person on the driver's seat and I'm fully in charge. Welcome to another episode of What is Trending. My name is Angelo Himalayas, your usual anchor. I have um, an update on Dele Farotimi and what he's been saying for the past few hours. Now, Dele Farotimi has been with um, Aisha Yusufu on her channel um, right from three hours ago and he has been letting out lots of secrets about the just concluded uh, general elections and um, hitches that took place during the elections and even what Governor Zulum of... Um, of, of Borno State and um, Senator Kashim Shetima, the Vice President-elect, uh, did to uh, the people of Meduguri after they lost in their various polling units. You would not believe the amounts of secrets that uh, Dele Farotimi has uh, brought out today. I brought you an update earlier on that Dele Farotimi let us know lots of issues about um, Professor Mahmoud and uh, the INEC. Now, Dele Farotimi has blown hot again. He has... Um, made various expositions on all the activities that took place post and pre-election okay now i will allow you to watch daily faro to me and um hear all expositions he had to say these secrets are so strong that we cannot wave them with the wave of the hand okay even if um the tribunal should lay their hands on these evidences i guess asiwaju and um, the INEP would not stand a chance in court so without wasting much of your time let me allow you to watch this video um, so that after watching it, we'll talk a little bit about it, then we'll go on to the next update. Watch the video. I also have an update, before I forget, I have, I have an update on the issue of the Labour Party in court this afternoon. So, the issue has been resolved and there is a result now. So, um, all obedience will keep their hands crossed and fingers crossed. I have an update on that. Stay tuned. The, the narrative has changed. Yeah. The narrative has already changed. The fact of the matter is that until 25th of February, the illusion was that there were some owners of Nigeria mm -hmm. outside of the people they had victimized in Nigeria. The victims of Nigeria spoke collectively on the 25th of February to let it be known to those who thought they own Nigeria that the people who own Nigeria what they are doing right now is a counter coup. They are trying to reassert their powers. Let me show you something, Aisha. On the 25th, that Saturday, 25th of, Ma of February, there is a market in Maiduguri called the Monday Market. Zulum and your vice president select, they lost so badly that they burnt that market in Maiduguri on Saturday 25th. It was burning until Monday before fire brigade was allowed to put out the fire. That was how pained they were at their loss within Maiduguri. If somebody had told you that Obi will win in Maiduguri, would you have believed it? Exactly. There's Obi even won. another one. Daily, there's even another one. I think in Bauchi, it vouches out. South. It vouches out. It South. I think they have almost a hundred or over a hundred polling units. Obi won more votes in four polling units than were recorded for him in the whole of Bauchi South. Mm -hmm. I was in the war room. I saw the figures coming in real time. So when they tell, see, is, this is when you see the PDP people quiet, it's not because they are, it's because they don't want to miss whatever will come to them from the crumbs of the P APC table because they are the same family. They won't fight in Ubu. We, who genuinely were robbed, we are the ones fighting. They are one family. So if anybody is waiting for Atiku and the PDP to join, them, no, they won't. They are positioning themselves to be offered something. They are, they are waiting to be offered seats 
at the table of impunity from where they have always ate. So let's be clear. This one is not a mar it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. But not them go tire. We not go tire. Okay. Um, Thank you. Number one, in answering, in speaking to the NSAS panel, I did allude to why we are before the judiciary today. I'm a Yoruba man. In my tradition, we have a proverb. It says, Ejola Anko that means that you should first learn how to state your case make your case before you learn how to fight so that by the time you are done fighting when they ask you so what happened you would have a narrative that explains why you did what you did so we've gone to court and because of a question you asked, which came later, I'll tell you how we came about go to court. Immediately they stole the election. The first word that came out of their mouth, which has become the mantra of fascists, go to court. So when they said go to court, of course, in the immediate aftermath of the electoral theft, we had had a meeting where we sat down and we agreed that, look, these people, they had deployed military forces across the country, particularly in the South, during the election. Some people mistook it for election security postings, but some of us said as far back as before the election that no, they are positioning this troop for the aftermath of election. So we knew that they were waiting for us to come and protest. So because we knew they were waiting for us to come and protest, we did not. So we took a decision to follow the judicial path. Not because we had ever given up the right of protest, because that is the inalienable right of anyone that is aggrieved. But if the process has shown you that if you are aggrieved, go to court, and you've now gone to court, the court that you have gone to offers you two opportunities that you must never miss. One, you make your case before the court but you also make your case in the court of public opinion. The people who are not unaware of the fact that you won. The knowledge of the fact that will be won is what is driving the hatred of the APC and Tinubu. That's why they've continued to attack him because they need to diminish him in the sight of the public because they know the true result. They know that he won. So we are going to court essentially to establish what we know to be the truth, what they know to be the truth. When I say they, I'm saying both the APC and even the PDP. Commonly, that political family that has ruined Nigeria all these years know what transpired on the 25th of February. So we are taking those facts before the court. We are not going there to prove to ourselves. We already know the truth, but we want to establish that truth, which are now to be established as facts before a court of law. We've taken that before the court of law. This is not about whether we trust the court or not. I have stated clearly, I do not. But we've taken this before them, and as we are establishing these facts before the court, the public who have been assailed every day by Tinubu's propaganda machine that Obid never had a path to victory. They are also getting to share these facts. The fact that INEC is irredeemably corrupt, did not follow the rules, deliberately truncated the process. This will be established before the court. And the Nigerian public will also see it. By the time we are done, whatever the court cares to say is up to the court. The court might decide that it is not really a court of justice. It might decide that, okay, it is an opportunity to redeem the Nigerian judiciary. That is the exclusive preserve of the court. I am not in control of what the court will do. I am only in control of what I will do. So I have gone to the court as prescribed by the law. 
whether the court now elects to do his own part or not is left to the court. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Still Nations Voice Tower. Don't forget to like our videos. Don't forget to share them to people in Nigeria and abroad. And don't forget to watch till the end. If you are an incoming subscriber, always remember to tap the subscribe button. And if you are an already existing subscriber, don't forget to tap the notification bell so you could get an update from us anytime we drop any. Now, um, you've heard it from Daily Faro to me there. My take on all this is that um, these things are coming at the time we need them. These evidences are erupting at the time we need them. I hope the Honorable Court and the Tribunal will give a listening ear to people like Daily Faro to me so they could stage their own evidence as a form of um, case or a form of, of defense against uh, the INEC and the APC for the Labour Party, okay? That is my own take on that. So, I urge Dele Faroti, me and Aisha Yusuf to continue giving us updates on various evidences that we are hidden in the public space right from the pre-election time, post-election time, and so on and so forth. So, we'll keep our fingers crossed because we trust, I trust Dele Faroti, me to bring more information to our tables. And I bet you what, I'm not going to back down from bringing you more updates on issues pertaining to the polity. Stay tuned. Now, in another development, the ongoing um, court case um, that's been taking place or going on between the Lamidia led faction and then the Julius Abure led faction of the Labour Party has finally come to a bit of an of a conclusion. I beg your pardon. Now, today, the Honorable Court, a Supreme Court, High Court, uh, finally um, made judgment and um, have pronounced sadly Lamidia Papa as the factional or as the main chairman of the Labour Party after hearings were conducted. Okay. Various members of the National Working Committee were part of the um, sitting in court today and various members of the National Executive Council were also part of the court proceedings today. So, I will allow you to watch Lamid Diakwapa and um, his factional um, ex schools or executives while why they make um, a, a sort of speech after the court hearing today uh, in Abuja. So, um, this court has finally pronounced that Julius Aburi can step aside while Lamid Diakwapa takes charge of affairs. I'm afraid now because I'm really, really fretting over the fact that Lamidia Papa has been handed the Labour Party because Lamidia Papa proves to be a, va a, a very, a very, um, a very funny and um, inferior product that came from somewhere else that we don't know. So allowing him to sabotage the Labour Party to the extent that he has been given power to man the affairs of the Labour Party, this is what talking about because now all obedience should finally find a way to strategize to win this uh, particular petition in court because with the likes of Lamidi Akpapa and then um, Aslam Erabe and then um, Abayomi Arabami with the likes of these people in the hem of affairs or at the hem of affairs in the Labour Party that means there are issues headaches will be recorded along or across the country and um, I bet you what Peter Obi may not reclaim his mandate again if these people remain the executives of the Labour Party. Watch Lamide Akpapa declare himself after the court sittings today. I am so pleased that justice has taken place today. Because under normal circumstances, we begin to doubt. But today, we are happy that uh, the judge has acted uh, promptly and reasonably. Uh, there's no doubt that I am now in charge. It has, it has now been confirmed by the court that I have the right to be in charge until another order is taking place. As of today, I'm the chairman, acting chairman of the party, and anybody who parades himself, apart from myself, is acting legally. And I want to tell the whole world that. Come next Friday, the real suit will start. When the issue of a forgery, conspiracy, and so on and so forth, we, 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 we commence. And from there, we know if actually that offense has been committed or not. I want to use this opportunity again to tell the whole world that the tribunal that is going on, I want to invite all the lawyers that are in charge, that are representing the Labour Party, that they should come for briefing. They should come and give me updates of what is happening in that tribunal within the next 48 hours. Because right now, I'm the person on the driver's seat and I'm fully in charge. I'm giving this support for them to know that this is the order. The acting national chairman of the party was in court, Alaji Bashiru Apapa Lamidi. 
and the, the court today pronounced very clearly that when a political party is in peace, they do not need the intervention of court. But once there is a crisis in the political party, a crack that makes it impossible, that makes the center no longer to hold, that invitation by any of the interested party for the court to intervene will be entertained by court. So contrary to their position that the court lacks jurisdiction to entertain the matter, contrary to their position that the matter is not justiciable, my Lord in its infinite wisdom today said no. Okay, uh, if you're just joining us, this is still Nations Barista. Well, that was Lamy Diakpa and his um, factional executives there. It is no longer news that he, the Supreme Court has have announced him as the Labour Party chairman acting though. So um, it is something that we'd have to worry about because these people are foreign bodies with no jurisdiction, with no legal backing. Right now they have a legal backing, of course. Maybe they have paid for a legal backing. And um, Lamilia Papa has now the constitutional right to parade himself as the Labour Party chairman. So sad for Julius Abure because um, Julius Abure is the one and only party chairman known by the 36 states Labour Party chairman and then the, the secretaries and then the um, board of trustees, even the National Working Committee and the National Executive Council, no, nobody but Julius Abure as the party chairman. So it's left for us to see what happens over time to see if um, the court sitting next Friday on this same issue would nullify the the um the national chairmanship of Akpapa or not. That is that. Uh, well, um, I wouldn't say good luck to Akpapa there because he is on the wild goose chase. I tell you, he is on the wild goose chase. He may not get what he's looking for, but um, lots of money has been involved. So it's left for us to see what happens at the end of the day. In another development, I have something from Abayomi Arabambi. This is coming from Abayomi Arabambi after the court case too. If you've been following the trend of events, Pastor E.A. E. Adeboye, sometime last week, Pastor E.A. E. Adeboye, who is the general overseer of the Redeemed Church, uh, Christian Church of God, came out to um, applaud or to a kind of issue a statement pertaining Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, um, talking about the fact that he feels that um, Asiwaju would do well and he needs all the backings of Nigerians to make sure Asiwaju does well while in seat of the presidency. To this effect, obedience came out online to um, probe him and also um, drag him out. Why will he affirm um, Asiwaju, a foreign body, somebody who did not win the elections? Why will he affirm Asiwaju as the president-elect of the country? And then why will he urge Nigerians to back up Asiwaju? Now, um, developing more, uh, Peter Obi came out to um, apologize uh, in spite or in the place of his supporters as to the reason why they made such a statement to E.A. Adeboye. Now, obedience have called Peter Obi out. Why would he come to apologize for an issue they feel they were saying their rights on, okay? For an issue they feel uh, was their right to um, to speak on, okay? Now, in the wake of that, Abayomi Arabambi, the National Publicity Secretary of the Labour Party, also a functional um, executive of the Lamid Papa led faction, came out today on um, a video footage to address all issues pertaining to the EA Adeboye case and what has been happening over time from the court issue down. So I will allow you to watch Arabambi and listen to all what he had to say. He was speaking with anger there, but I will allow you to watch him and hear what he had to say over the EA Adeboye case and the obedience. The PO granted an interview where he lambasted the obedient people that are attacking Pastor Adeboye. Obedient people will definitely respect the law. But OBD, they are no member of the Labour Party. These are reneged, you know, from most of these mushroom parties, people that have no bearing. Those are the people we call OBD. They are not part of us. They are just mercenaries. I hope you get me. Yes. These are a bunch of mercenaries. These are people that are predators, you know. They thought our party is an avenue for them to come and light their illegal coast. But the opinion are the people that are with Labour Party. That has agreed to follow the rule of law. And that, that is what I said that obedient and Labour Party members should be wary of anybody that wants to cause war. How will you tell me you are in Nigeria and you want to bring us into war? Look at what is happening in Sudan. Is that the kind of thing anybody wants to tell me? The blood of Nigeria is so important. Are you catching me? Yeah, to the class of anybody. So that is, those are the people I call obedient. They are not members of the Labour Party. So we don't want them in Labour Party. They should stay where they are coming from. They do not make any statement 
You see the name of Labour Party, they are not allowed because they are not a member. Mm. So that is that is what we are saying. The obedient are the Labour Party family. <clears throat> Who will stand by the rule of law? Who will obey the law, you know, of Nigeria? For anybody who is calling for an interim administration, anybody who say no, don't do swearing in on May 29th, we call them obedient. Because where is the antecedent? So wherever they get the antecedent from, I don't know. But you see, for most of these obedient, they are be behaving <coughs> like a non-Nigerian. Those who just have interest in plugging us into war, and they are not member of our party, that's why I call us the security agency. They are whosoever in any capacity, call for bloodshed in Nigeria, they should be arrested. They are no member of the Labour Party. We don't want our name as a political party to go down this of Nigeria as a political party that bring Nigeria against themselves. Hmm. They are approaching pro Nigeria into war. We do not want that. That was not the ideology. I can't be in the party for 14 years. Some people will not tell me they know the party more than you know we do. They should go back to where they are coming from. If they know as that's from our table. I hope you've um, enjoyed all of this we gave you. Don't forget to always stay glued to Nation Voice Tower for more political updates. See you next time. Bye.